Welcome back into our show. This segment is brought to you by our friends at Southeast Termite and Pest Control. You see their website right there. Cold weather means that critters and creatures of all kinds are going to try and find a warm place to bed down. If you find an unwanted guest, anything from a possum to a raccoon, uh, in your home or your crawl space or your attic, call the Wildlife Division at Southeast Termite and Pest Control. They trap them, they remove them, and they have a great crew that repairs the damage done. They can also, if you see something where an animal's trying to get in, they can do the work on that and make preventative measures for you too. Check them out online. You'll be very impressed by what they do. Southeast termite and pest control. Okay, if this thing ends badly for Pruitt, that means more than likely there's gonna be NCAA issues ahead for Tennessee of some sort. If that is the case, what do you do with Philip Fulmer? Because if that's the case, you would have given everybody, fans and media, what they wanted. We need a Tennessee guy as the AD. We need a football man as the AD. And you will have wound up in NCAA issues firing a coach. Mm -hmm. Do you allow that same coach to make the next hire on his own? Do you put him as part of a committee? Do you gently point the door? Do you just do what you did last time and heave-ho him? What do you do with Philip Fulmer if this thing goes sideways to Pruitt and the NCAA? You know, I think it's a tougher question simply because he's got a bigger body of work than just what's going on with football, although that is 50% of the body. But he, he navigated a, a issue, an issue with Rick Barnes a couple of years ago after the season was over, the UCLA thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You've got the Lady Vol. I mean, it, it, to me, it's not as simple as just, okay, this thing didn't work with Pruitt and you whack him. The biggest part of so it doesn't work with Curry. But go ahead. The biggest part, if it doesn't work with Pruitt, that I think hangs over his head is you hired him and the NCAA violations. Not the fact that he didn't win, the fact mm -hmm. that now you've got this NCAA time bomb ticking over there potentially as well. If this thing is serious enough, I, I don't know that, that Philip Fulmer survives as athletic director. If he does, and I think he could be part of a committee, but I don't think he would have the final say so and just be a one member committee on hiring a football coach. I think there would be some input. And part of the problem is, as athletic director, in my opinion, he was basically hired to do one thing, and that's fix football. Well, they haven't fixed football. So that would be a problem with the legacy of Philip Fulmer. I would also look at his last two, his last two major football hires. Dave Clawson blew up in his yeah. face and cost him his coaching job. Yeah. Jeremy Pruitt, as of today, hasn't worked out, and if the NCAA comes in and drops the hammer, then you can't even say that, that, well, at least he's leaving it in better shape than Butch Jones did. No, he's had just as many transfers out as Jones did, and he will have left it on NCAA mm -hmm. issues. So I, I, it would be tough for me to say, you know what, you've had your last two strikes are ugly, but I'm giving you a third strike in terms of making the hire by himself. Vince, what do you do with Philip Fulmer? Well, my guess is they wouldn't look at that far into the past to judge Philip Fulmer. I think they would judge him on the here and now. And Bob's right. There have been a lot of the other sports that have improved under his watch, seem to be more continuity within the athletic department, although you wonder now the way this whole thing is playing out. But I don't think those things outside of football carry the weight that football does. I've said this many times. Philip Fulmer, his legacy as AD is going to be judged based on what happens with football. If football success and proves a success, then he will be a success as AD. I don't think, I'm with Jimmy, I don't think that he would be, uh, be given the reins to run a coaching search on his own because that was the, his first task. And it did not work out if they do part ways, especially with NCAA issues. And then another th factor is, is what about potential candidates if Philip Fulmer is the one hiring a, a potential coach? Is the, the, you're going to have a, a, a shorter list of candidates that are going to wonder, okay, what am I, what's my future if Philip Fulmer rides out into the sunset yep. or isn't running this coaching search on his own? Uh, am I going to uh, be working for someone that didn't hire me? And is he a meddler? Don't think that the next coach isn't going to call Jeremy Pruitt and say, what was that like? Because right. there are people that say he's over there watching film with them. Uh, we know that he was down on the practice field, that they had to self-report yeah. that to the NCAA. Uh, there are a lot of coaches that aren't going to want that. Uh, right. and, and that's not just a Philip Fulmer thing. Barry Alvarez had a lot of coaches have had success up there. He hadn't kept them all. They've left. He's had a couple that just said, 
Bye-bye. It's successful here, but I'm leaving. Okay, why? Could it be that Barry Alvarez is, here, no, do this. No, here, let me reach around and do this. So I think that Philip Fulmer's job status has to be a concern. Nobody wants to take a job and not know who their boss is going to be in one year or two years because, you know, new bosses bring new people. And then anybody that's coming in to take this job is also going to be concerned about the meddling aspect. What is the relationship mm -hmm. between him and the current coach? I'll, I'll I think throw it's out one more event defense of Coach Fulmer, and, and and it's you know not nothing anybody said here. I don't think is not correct. Right. But he came in in the middle of a horrible, horrible coaching search last time, dealt a bad deck when he made the hire. And if that was, if this was just simply that Jeremy Pruitt had not worked out and they fired him in December, then I think you could sort of say, okay, coach, we're going to give you a, a pass on Jeremy Pruitt. Let's find another coach. I think what damages him more than being the guy that hired Jeremy Pruitt is the way it's gone since the Texas A&M game ended. I mean, that's, that's just another he also mixed up spinning sideways planet again. And yeah. that one, you can't say, well, I'm giving you a passport. He also, here's the thing. There were people who were going to be fine if Pruitt had come back with Mike Leach. They were, it was already on Twitter. I don't think Vol Nation was going to freak out over Mike Leach. They liked the idea of the pirate. Yeah. I don't know that it would have worked. It wouldn't have been my hire. I think he's so much of a wild card off the field it wouldn't have worked. But somebody was in the president's ear yeah. at that time saying, Mike Leach has got problems. You want to let him, and, you know. He doesn't work like heck. So, you know, the fact that he took over a program, a yeah. search that was bad, well, part of it was bad was because you had somebody who was serving as assistant to the president, in my opinion, advisor to the president, who was saying, I wouldn't be doing that if I were the AD. You know what I would do if I were the AD? And then they made him the AD, and it's like, oh. So I would hold him accountable. I wouldn't give him that defense. That said, I was, I was bragging on him this summer. I, I talked all summer about what a great job he had done in terms of messaging, in terms of Vol fans remaining calm in the, in the face of issues going on with programs and stuff. They trust in him, but now they're painting rocks saying fire him. So I, I don't know. I'm, it's not like I'm campaigning against this guy. I was bragging on him two months ago. But with this, if you wind up in NCAA issues, I don't see how you allow him to make the next hire. All right, when we come back, let's talk about UT. They're being very silent, and they're allowing the narrative to take off. And by the way, we've got basketball coming up. That's next. But before we get to basketball, we're going to talk about should Tennessee be saying something, anything? Come on back. <laughs> 